microphone, please. Excuse me. The um, September 26, 2022, uh, Building Appeals Board meeting for the City of Ojai is hereby convened. Um, and uh, we will um, start with the traditional Pledge of Allegiance. Um, would you like to lead that, Tom? Oh, excuse me. That's true. Oh, yeah. <coughs> okay. It, in, in that case, would you like to call the roll? I'd be happy to. Bob Daddy? Present. Tom Farmer? Here. Bill Ulrich? Here. Reno Rolle? Here. Dale Hansen, we have a quorum. Very good. Okay, now we'll do the. Uh, All right. Microphone, please. <laughs> public communications is the time set aside during the Building Appeals Board meeting for members of the public to address the Building Appeals Board on items of city business other than scheduled agenda items. Matters raised at this time may be briefly discussed by the board and will generally be referred to staff and or placed on a subsequent agenda. Under state law, other than for emergency items, no action can be taken at this meeting on public communications. So uh, we have two cards. Um, no, we have one card, and that is William Weirich. Thank you. I wanted to get up before the record here. Uh, yes? What? OK. Um, <clears throat> too many years lecturing in 200 person lecture halls. Um, time has not tempered my degree of concern, some degree outrage over the uh, fact that my colleagues uh, chose not to stand behind the right of appeal uh, embedded in the, uh, our ordinances, uh, embedded in um, common sense ethical standards and embedded in the uh, state building code and other state statutes. I would hope that this board will consider looking forward with the uh, and working with the uh, next people coming into city council. And if you find an instinct favorable towards standing, you know, in ensuring the rights of citizens to appeal, that you um, consider ways of make of or an ordinance changes that make this board more uh, self-directed in terms of uh, um, going through the same process as other commissions go through to call your own meetings and uh, also um, look at um, how to possibly uh, to change the ordinance language so that we don't have a, a position of uh, being uh, so easy for uh, staff recommendations to abrogate the rights of appeal and for uh, hopefully convince uh, future councils not to uh, uphold those vetoes of appeal rights. Just wanted to mention that for future reference. Thank you. I, I have a question since you're a member of that, um, of that board. Um, of the council, yes. 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 What, that, I think people's judgments were colored by the circumstances of the individual case and forgetting a, 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 core, a, a core aspect of, of 
the, uh, 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 what I consider one of the bedrock of, of, of proper ethics and, de and design and government, which is the Rawlsian veil of ignorance. You should never judge uh, the process by what you think the outcome should be. Microphone, please. On? Okay. It seems a bit backwards. Uh, however, having said that, um, what about the... Well, that gets into personal issues. No, no, no. I mean, I would In terms of different. personal observations, and I'm, I'm making a process to, yes. uh, observation. How about the, the, um, um, the changing of the ordinance or the direction to be more self-directed? Well, I think that in the past, uh, you know, there's been some thoughts called back and forth on how to do that. And basically, uh, to using the uh, existing commission's uh, language as a template for how the, uh, the ordinance language could be changed to allow a majority vote of the uh, board to uh, uh, indicate to staff that they need to schedule and, and proceed with uh, a, a, a BAB board meeting. I think that the uh, BAB needs to be looked at uh, a little bit more, uh, with a little bit more equivalency with uh, other commissions. And perhaps, um um, I'd be happy to help with language on that, but you know, yeah, but it's going to be a new council issue, and perhaps benefiting from the uh, the knowledge and the <coughs> input. Yeah. Anyway, I just want to say that for public. Very good. Comment. Okay. And anyone have any comments? All right. Very good. Um, so, having uh, reached the end of the uh, public communications, we have one the discussion item: code adoption for the 2022 <coughs> building code cycle. Um, Mr. Cheswiak, would you like to read the uh, recommendation? Uh, yeah, the recommendation is to consider a recommendation to council regarding amendments of the California Building Code. And then would you like me to briefly describe what the changes are? Yes, please. Sure. So we've carried um, all of the coded options that we pre previously adopted. We carried them through from the 19 to the 22 code. And then uh, we added the, uh, the requirements for all electric buildings, which was adopted under ordinance uh, 911. Um, so we just carried that through into this code adoption. And then staff is also recommending to add uh, the California Building Code 711 and the California Residential Code Section R337.11, which is requiring that um, existing structures be fire hardened um, uh, when a building permit is issued with a valuation over $25,000. So then 20% of that valuation, so if you did $25,000 valuation, $5,000 of that, would then be added to the project to fire harden. Um, some uh, recommendations would be to put, uh, put the required venting in, put in, um, put in uh, gutters for leaf control, um, spark arresters, and so forth. Can I ask a question? Yes, please. Oh. Just, yeah, don't forget that. <laughs> Uh, Tom, so can a person choose what fire hardening uh, items they wish to do? So those would be required. As long as it comes to the 20% value. Th those would be required. So there are exceptions. If you uh, do 100% of uh, fire hardening, uh, <coughs> put in windows. Those windows are tempered. That's a fire hardening um, expense. Right. Also, if you did a re-roof, all the re-roofing would then already be done. So things like that. There so are exceptions. You have to do another 20% because that's already part of it. Exactly. Okay. This would be for an addition, okay. let's say an addition or an ADU uh -huh. or a remodel of the, like an interior part of the house or even a TI on a commercial property. Thank you. <coughs> Question? Of course. Um, Tom, give, give me the difference between uh, 711 and COC 33711. Um, it appears it's just about the same thing with different codes. Give me that. 
Give, uh, give it's, me this it's just simply which code applies for which. So residential code applies to single and two family homes. And uh, the building code applies to non-residential codes. Okay, buildings. so that's 337 is non-residential. That's going to be? 337 is residential. Okay, and then the 711 is commercial? Non-residential. Okay. Um, so I, I guess what we're going to do is you want us to take notes and go through everything till we get it down and then come back with questions and suggestions on how we'd like to see the final or do you want to do the final one at a time? What's what's the pleasure? Okay, does anyone? Does anything stand out that we need to? Yeah, well, we're going to get to that. Um, I, <coughs> in the meantime, though, I'm, I'm, um, um, I just wanted to uh, uh, clarify if there were any general questions, and that seems like it was the end of the general questions. So, okay, um, regarding the um, staff recommendations. So, at this point, yes, we're ready to take um, we're ready to take um, comment on item one, and there is one, uh, William Wyrick. I'm going to have to get good at my three minutes structure here. Yeah. Four more meetings. All right, I am a member of Heron Council. When I saw this, I believe it was distributed Friday, it was when the Building Appeal got this very complicated and lengthy document. Uh, I immediately had a response uh, to um, not recalling. Oh, that's my phone. Darn it. Sorry about that. Who the heck is that? Anyway, um, normally extensive policy initiatives taking a lot of contract time and staff time are done after turn sheet comes before council. Council uh, then approves going forward with that term sheet and approach knowing and basically authorizing the resources for that very extensive initiative. I don't recall that occurring in that work document, that any term sheet and council uh, concurrence with that approach that is included in that uh, uh, policy document was, uh, made, uh, was made aware to council or that council agreed that the, this extensive type of uh, resource uh, should be invested in this. So I'm concerned about that because staff is not supposed to engage in these types of policy initiatives without uh, council direction. At least that's been our protocol. I'm wondering why it, I, I'm not aware of that happening in this case. I uh, would like to know, you know, I think that in, in that spirit, I'd like to know how many build contract hours we're talking about here, how many staff hours we're talking here. It looks like a very extensive body of work. And uh, we keep being told that we, other things are not being done because of lack of staff resource time. And I'm just kind of wondering, you know, what, what's the, the total direct and calculated expenditure to date on this project? I'd like to know who, uh, who specifically managed this project and who initiated each item on the list. And I'd like to know uh, who authorized this project to proceed because it is a one way, let's just take fire hardening, which is just part of this document. There's many ways to get there. And this is, I'm sorry about that, this is like an ADA hardship allowance, which tends to inhibit building activity, if you know what an ADA hardship allowance is, as opposed to an incentive approach. And it also depends on people waiting to do a permitted activity where I thought what we wanted is the broadest possible far hardening, whether permitted activity was going on or not. So I question whether this has been thought through in terms of how we should be approaching this and how it was handled. Thank you. And I'm sorry about the call. Microphone, please. Yet, Chris, 
yet questions were raised. So uh, is anyone interested in pursuing? Who knows the answer? answers? I would gain say that the Mr. building James official Grant, would know. Do you know who uh, made this um, paperwork for us? <laughs> I did. You did. Who gave you permission? Um, city manager. City manager? Okay. Because so, we have to do code adoption every three years. Yeah. And so we proposed a one uh, code amendment that is different from previous code adoption. It's just a suggestion, doesn't need to be taken. Which code amendment is that one? It's the exterior for our fire hardening of his existing structures. Oh, okay. That's the only amendment that has changed in this document okay. from the previous document. Okay. okay, so to be clear, we have effectively 20 pages of um, sections, code sections, um, with uh, current language, proposed language, and, uh, and a reason for that language change. And then we have uh, uh, that reflected in another 20 pages, uh, which has to do with the uh, uh, adoption uh, of uh, uh, a, um, the total building code. Um, Plumbing code, electrical code, administrative code, energy code, um, residential code, green building standards code, fire code, and uh, various sections of California health and safety code. That's what the second 20 pages are. Um, and it's a draft document, but this is essentially what we would be um, reviewing, approving, and uh, recommending to City Council. If you so desire. Well, no, that's but presented to us in the in the, the right. package. You can you can choose not to propose it. Okay. You can you could choose. Oh, yeah, of course, uh, of course. So uh, this is going to take, okay, and, and accurate, from, for accuracy perspective, I received my copy uh, Thursday uh, afternoon around 4.30. So um, um, uh, I'm going to, um, um, does anyone have any questions or comments they'd like to make? I have a few. Yeah, I'd like to go back to my original question. Are we going to take these items, wing them one at a time, or do we want to go through everything else, or does the building official have any more uh, comments that he wants to make on the additions and what they're for and why they're for, and then we get into it? How do we want to start carving this salad up? Well, is there anything new that we haven't done before? Yes. But, I mean, in terms of fire hardening. Yes. Everything I hear him saying, we've done before. No. Like what? Well, we never had a $25,000 threshold with a 20%. Oh, okay. So that's... I mean, there's a few that, things we've never done That's what's before. in the first 20 pages. Okay. Um, so, yeah, that part is new. But okay. the, the actual act of the fire hardening is the same that we've always proposed. But the way it's done now with the 25 and 20%, the 25000 and above and 20%, that's the part that's new. Right. Yes, it's because it's okay. going. That's going to be codified in a different. Yeah, and 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 I and I'm really not happy with that. And the reason I'm really not happy with that is to take the commercial building codes and the residential building codes and have an equate the same value. I don't think is even close to reality. I I think that there's there's a much different burden. Plus, I think there's a much different need. And I think when we get into the commercial, what we need to do is see what we can expand. You're only going to get a bite every three years. And so a, a number of things could have happened. And I'm not giving anybody a bad time, this water under the bridge. But if you take a look and you see where we are across the board and a lot of the things that we're trying to do at once, 
which is fragmented into a half a dozen different items. 17% of all energy resources in America are used to heat water. And when I take a look at the old laundromat, the old cleaners down at the corner of Montgomery, it has a massive amount of rooftop. And when I take a look at the El Roblar with a massive amount of rooftop and the arcade and all of these big commercial buildings have these massive rooftops where they could put solar-assisted hot water. We could have the commercial buildings have recirculating hot water for a lot of reasons. We don't want the tap running my water down the drain while we're waiting for it to get hot. We also don't want to be wasting energy to get hot. It is hotter than hell outside. And if we had solar, I mean, there are months and months and months we wouldn't have to use any outside fuel to heat water with a proper storage container. But can I? So you're talking about solar as opposed to fire hardening, and we're looking at fire hardening. Now, I'm not against the solar. I think it's a great idea, but isn't that a different different needing what I'm saying is it's it's additional oh, yeah. and and if we're gonna go with these thresholds and these amounts of money I think what we need to do is that the fire hardening is very important right. I think the conservation of energy water and the other things are also very important and I think what we should do is incorporate those into one if you're gonna be doing the construction do as many things as you can at the same time what, what he, I, if I may, what he's saying is, is there's more to this. Yeah. There's a lot of, um, there, there's a lot to the meat of the coconut. And at this point, uh, and I'll make a motion after a bit, mm -hmm. um, I don't feel that I've had enough time to review this. Um, I don't feel that I have, you, um, you, that um, we've had collectively enough time to do this, and even uh, to the extent that reading what and understanding what's in this packet um, before we embark on the line by line, because there's always questions right. that get tangential to everything that we, yeah. having done this a few cycles in the past. So my, my motion down the road here uh, in this meeting is going to be, um, to um, to um, um, table it? No, not table it, but give us effectively give us uh, another some t uh, another uh, s uh, chunk of time to uh, read and absorb this, um, and perhaps even uh, put some of those questions in writing to the building official so that we would be more efficient here. So that's your motion. That that will be that. But like I said, I'll, I'll make that motion in in due course. But that's what I'm I'm proposing. So, by way of are we going to jump into it? Um, I I don't see that as having from past experience that having been effective. So, but having said that, we have a somewhat belated and additional um, public Jeffrey Starkweather comment on item one. Very belated. I. <laughs> sorry, sorry, but I hadn't, you know, it's hard to, when I got this document, um, it wasn't clear what was new and what was, you know, being, being added on. I do think, though, I, I agree with the chairman about continuing this. It seems like on the electrical buildings, for an example, we had different standards for ADUs, affordable housing, and uh, commercial kitchens and was supposed to be making it electric ready. I don't know that that's incorporated here. I don't see that. And of course, the city and various organizations related to it have been talking about what we're gonna do about fire hardening. It just seems like this ought to be part of a, of a consistent approach that we're taking and what is the best approach. And it seems like also, since we're talking about requiring homeowners to, to add to their uh, cost of rehabbing or ADUs, that we ought to uh, have some builders get some input on so this sort of thing. How, you know, what's the, what's the realistic, I, how this is gonna affect them. It seems like this ought to be advertised to the public of what's actually happening, because it's gonna affect people 
in their re, you know, rehabilitation, and there ought to be like a public hearing. So we get some input from people. So I, I agree completely that it need to be continued and to uh, do that sort of thing. Bill? Mr. Jesuit. Yeah. There will be a public hearing when this goes to council. This is just a recommendation of the Building Appeals Board. There, there will be an introduction and then a public hearing when it goes to council. Yeah, uh, uh, and I understand. What a rogues gallery. Like the uh, yes, this, this, that, this is also uh, ostensibly, last time I checked, a public hearing where the nuts and bolts of it. Um, for the most part, we're doing the work that the council doesn't do. Um, and um, unless they're aware of particular areas or concerned about particular areas, pretty much they get handed um, a recommendation packet. Um, and with probably even less time to absorb it than we do. So from a discussion perspective, I haven't seen it in the past get extremely detailed, um, or oftentimes it's treated like it's a, um, um, it's a routine. So uh, at this point, this is our opportunity to suss through things for the public to be involved, and it typically takes several meetings. Good, then I'd like to finish my thought. Please. Um, I want to make sure that I didn't miss something because this is a quick read and I made my chicken scratching. Um, I want to make sure when we speak about windows and windows not being part of the extra 20% that all acrylic skylights don't have any extra 20% added on it and don't have any permit cost. These things are so dangerous and, and they're such a hazard that they need to be removed just as quick as people can. So I'd like to see anything with the acrylic or the non-glass skylights get some special waiver if we can in there because... Um, waiver? Yeah, if somebody wants to replace a skylight uh, I don't really think that there should be any type of a permit required unless it's going to be, I mean, what are we going to do? We're going to go ahead and look at the, uh, do it, do an inspection on a skylight. And, Rate, and, well, and, yeah, and, actually, and, skylight and, and, inspections and, and, are kind of important. And I think it's very important, and I think we shouldn't have a fee for that. I, we need these things out of here. They're a hazard, oh, they're oh, a mess. Yeah. Let's get them the hell out of here. Let's give people an incentive to get them out of here. Well, that's why let's, I asked. Let's tell people we want to work with them. So I, I want the skylights to go with a, with the least obtrusive way that we can go. Okay. I have a related question for the building official. Um, when someone changes out their roof and they need to make it comply with the ordinance, the Ojai OMC ordinance that requires Class A, Roof um, is the skylight. Um, is, is an acrylic skylight allowed to remain as part of a Class A roof? Technically, yes, but we can write it in there that they have to have. We can. I thought we. I thought in previous iterations we had done away with. We didn't. Acrylic. We did. It, we it did have not missed make it a condition of a of it, a of a, of a re -roof. Re roof. Okay. We can make it a condition of a re roof. Yeah. Oh, I thought that we once nope. again. I I am mistaken. Obviously. Um. Okay. We that was our intention. We we've discussed that at least on two iterations of this. So I'm uh, going over six years. I know. Now we're going to go back and we're going to fine rake everything. Okay. All right. The other okay. thing I'd like to see with that is. One of these days we're going to get some rain and people are going to realize these things have shrunk, the mastic has shrunk, the things have cracked, and they're going to get a leak and they're going to need to go ahead and replace them. At that time, I think it should be, there should be no cost other than what they're going to have to spend to do that. I don't think we ought to hit them with the cost. You're talking, what shrinking what? A roof? No, the, no the, mas the mastic around, the skylight, the skylights get brittle, the skylights crack. The skylights have issues. If somebody's going to replace the skylight, we want to help them and incentivize them. So there should be no permit fee. Should be no fees for anybody replacing acrylic skylights or plastic or some other bad thing like that. Do you have any idea off the top of your head, um, uh, Tom, what the uh, uh, permit fee would be for a skylight replacement? 
I want to say it's about $174, each? roughly. Each? Yeah. Well, it's based off of valuation. I think it's $174 or roughly around there. Okay. We've got people so with three, got and five, uh, three and you know, four. Five or, or seven skylights. It would it'd be based off of valuation at that point. Okay, so I, th I think that's a valid point. Okay. Yeah. Um, All right. okay. I would like to see a total difference, just go down a totally different path between the commercial and the home. Uh, any commercial, at, and I would like to see the threshold move way, way, way down. Any commercial that is retrofitting needs to get rid of their uh, uh, urinals and put in flushless urinals. It's, it's, it's time for us to, to do all the water savings we can in commercial buildings. Can I say one thing about the water saving stuff? So, Bob, I'd like your idea about using the roof systems. Uh, one thing I caution about is adding weight to some of these older buildings. So water is heavy. Absolutely. So, so putting that, you might have to retrofit the, the framing of the roofing system. That's going to get expensive. Where you could put in a point of use hot water heater under the sink and put in also censored faucets and stuff. Uh, those are just options that I've done in other cities. You know what? I'd make a suggestion. That's a good point. Yeah. Here, here's the suggestion, ready? Give them the option to do A or B, but don't give them the option to do nothing. So if, if you'd rather do this, now what we may find is when you have something extensive as El Roblar, they will have the roof, they will have the recirculation, but then they will have an insulated tank on the ground and avoid all that extra roof weight. Okay, they can do that. But let's give them the option, but, but just tell them, hey, sorry, you got to have 25% solar-assisted heat use. I would ask then um, that everyone on the Building Appeals Board who has notions of or suggestions or um, items that they would like to be included in the deliberations and incorporated in the adoption ultimately, that they contribute those uh, between this meeting and the next meeting um, so that uh, and, and forward them to uh, the building official um, so that uh, he can uh, um, vet them for issues that we may not have considered uh, and then we could uh, uh, also have them incorporated in appropriate language for adoption. Okay. And, and then I would like to see a lower threshold for commercial. So 10,000 and 20 for commercial. Yeah. 25,000 for residential. Okay. Okay. It's a little easier for the commercial. Okay. So come up with the money because that's what they're going to do. That would be individual board members to the building official and recommendations or requests. So, okay. Um, do, um, while um, um, Planning Commission Chair Quillis is uh, present here, he has to go to another meeting. Um, he's, we have a copy of his uh, bullet points relative to what the Planning Commission <laughs> has been up to uh, in the last uh, period. Um, that's a lot of bullet points. Um, busy, busy, busy. Um, does anyone have any questions or would like to um, pose any questions to uh, Chair Quillacy before he um, departs for? Yes, I would. OK, go ahead. Um, I would certainly would like to see our um, building um, our, our Title 10, if that's where it is, uh, take a new look at parking requirements. It seems that parking requirements have now become a way to prevent vacant buildings from opening up and, uh, and uh, really crowd out and make it very difficult for additional uh, units. Um, and the city of LA has decided that parking is no longer a requirement for commercial use for existing buildings. And if you get somewhere and the parking lot's full, go somewhere else. 
and the city shouldn't be in the business of guaranteeing a business to be profitable because we mandate a bunch of more public parking and we waste a lot of money to get more cars and more people in. If a business owner wants to thrive, then they need to rent the right place to start with. And if they only rent a place with two parking places, then they understand their capacity. And, and the other thing too, come on guys, in 30 years, I, I always made it to the festival. And for 25 years, I always made it to the playhouse. And, and, and nobody ever missed an event, but everybody wants the parking to be right in front, exactly where they are in front of the ice cream place for ice cream. And that's not realistic. I mean, if you want to know what's really happening in this town, look at the line at 12 o'clock on signal in front of the taco place when it's 100 degrees out and there's 50 people standing in line in 100 degrees. So I don't want to hear it's difficult for people may in this town. May I suggest also that we add to that bicycle parking available for every commercial building? That's in there. We don't. I that that, I, that I, code I has been there have since. That it's just not enforced. It's, not enforced. it's been there since two thousand and four. Yeah. Let's so. enforce it. Okay. Well. Okay. Anything else for? Uh, anything else for? Uh, um, well, I, uh, well, there was there was there was one issue. I think it's on the list here, um, that that came up very recently with the last planning commission meeting. And that was a new building at the uh, animal shelter up on Bryant Street. And the Planning Commission strongly recommended the use of gray water, keep it on the property. Not telling people how to replumb the inside of the building. That's not what we do. We talk about land use. And in fact, if you look at the code, the, the term gray water, G R A Y water, all one word appears in Title 10. It does not appear in Title 9, except possibly through reference to the California Plumbing Code. And if there's something in there that mandates gray water plumbing, um, then we don't have to mandate it when we talk about a case. I don't know. Does the building official know? It, uh, it does not mandate it. It, re it tells you uh, how to construct it what's required to construct it. Yeah, the, the municipal code right now defines gray water, but does not require gray water systems. If that's something that the VAB wants to recommend to the city council and city council changes the text of the code, then we then the planning commission would not have to strongly recommend it well, in new cases. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll consider that perhaps in another. We got a, a little bit on our plate right now. Plus, uh, yeah. that as because of those, because the building code, as the plumbing code establishes how to do it, uh, it's already an option. Um, um, uh, and, and it says if you plan to, you, to use gray water other than throwing it into the sanitary sewer system, here's how to do it. Exactly. Great. Yeah. And and we're it say we're, do it or don't do it. Were the um, were the planning commission uh, make it a condition of a conditional use permit or some other approval, which we uh, just or entitlement? Did. Yeah. Yes. My my question is, how how y'all figure to enforce that? Oh, let's not go there. Well, I, I kind of uh, have because to because uh, everything that we do, city and you do, city enforcement of conditions if, of if, approval on planning commission cases is uh, let's say it's intermittent. Well, then why go through the, uh, the song and dance to get it there? Because we want to be on the record as saying it should be there. Whether it actually happens or not okay. is out of our hands. I just, I it's, just... like, it's like the parking. Uh, city Council said, go look at parking. Well, we don't have a budget the way the Arts Commission does. We can't engage anyone to do a parking study even if there were someone ready and willing and available to do a parking study as a consultant. Uh, and so we haven't done anything with that. Uh, I understand there's an ad hoc committee of the city council right now that is looking at parking. Who knows what, what yeah, that will come that, of. That, that's been a, f but, a yeah. feature of the community for decades. Yeah. Parking, <laughs> parking is part of Title 10, Chapter 2, Article 14. And 
maybe some changes will be necessary in there. We're waiting for direction from city council. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. If there's anything else, feel free to contact me anytime. Very good. I just added at the end here, in addition to our normal twice a month meetings, which we regularly do, we've had three additional special meetings just to try to catch up on the backlog of cases. And the things that you see here, El Roblar, we, we saw three or four times. Rancho Inn, we saw three or four times because they're continuing controversies or new issues that come up, whatever. So we're staying busy. Very but good. If you have questions, just let me know. You all know how to get a hold of me. Very good. Thank you. And I'll see you at the Sanitary District Board please, meeting. Please advise Allison. Shortly. Yes. Allison. So. In 15 minutes. Thank you yeah, all. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Yeah, it's right past. Um, okay. Um, I, I have, I, I, I'm, um, um, How is, uh, and this is kind of a, a question that's left over kind of from uh, Councilman Weirich's uh, uh, questions. Um, how, how much is, does this process take? How much does this process cost? It's built into the fee schedule. Okay, but? We're percentage of fees based off of the permit costs that come in. Mm -hmm. No additional charge to the city for me to do this and to attend these meetings. Okay. Um, so having said that, it really doesn't matter when it was authorized by whom or anything else. Um, okay. Um, is there any uh, further comments at this point? Then I'm going to uh, make a... Uh, a motion that we uh, continue this review um, until a, a time uh, in the future determined by the building official and the availability of the building appeal board members. Um, Are we going to try to have a meeting with ourselves first? No. I, I no. Well, no. 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 Um, and we will. Um, um, reconvene with um, either additional questions and additions or answers to questions and additions that we've proposed individually directly to the building official and um, uh, whereupon we will reconvene and go through uh, um, we should be prepared at that point to go through everything item by item uh, I would ask that um, <clears throat> we ask our building official when we send in some of these ideas um, that um, they also take a look at some other some of the ideas that are out there and if there are any more changes that we think we can make past the fire hardening I'm talking about conservation I'm talking about some other things I mean it, it, it almost appears that if every building in Ojai had attic fence we could save a tremendous amount of electricity we need to start thinking about all the small things the big things are out of control and we need to start thinking about all the small things and so any of those things we can put in i don't want to make them wildly expensive but i would like to fans are cheaper than air conditioning fans take a hell of a lot less energy than air conditioning so you know let's start thinking about those those little mini things that we can do and and start putting in the code see where we can get our best efficiencies okay. you know, a lot of this will be reviewed by the new council practically i mean we're going to be looking at what three new council people and yeah uh, and we only have three here. more meetings of the current yeah. at, at least three yeah so it may or may not be, but the reality of the situation is I don't know what detail they're going to be looking at things unless it's brought, unless someone has a, a, a public comment about it. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, it is, judging by the past, they take a look at what our recommendations are and discuss and adopt whole, in whole or in part. So. They don't have history either with us. Okay, so a motion, can we get a... Mr. Ork? Yes. I just want to note that... 
The new building code takes effect January 1st, whether, and the ordinance will have to be in place for 30 days. Now, as you just stated, the timeline for council meetings, we're getting down to it. So just be aware, January 1st, uh, new codes will go in effect. However, the amendments would not be effective. Understood. Okay. So uh, take a roll call for the vote on the a motion to. Uh, was there a second to, to the motion? I'll second it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, Bob Daddy? Yes. And Tom Farmer? Yes. And Bill Owens? Yes. Yes. And myself? Yes. All right. Adjourned. On that uh, mm -hmm. on that note, then I adjourn this uh, meeting at six fifty. Uh, excuse me, five fifty.